Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Well, folks, we're right in the midst of the political national campaign. And boy, I'll tell you, there's so many things out there. I mean, you, you just don't have enough time to do anything. And everybody's got their own TV, media, and the whole nine yards with your smartphones. I mean, you got all kinds of stuff. I mean, you don't read the newspaper anymore. I like it. I like the idea of having a cup of coffee and get in my little private office mm -hmm. and do my thing and, mm -hmm. and try to read. You know, get away from all the other stuff. But trust me, there's a lot of things out there. And the only thing I can say to you is that, hey, be calm. You know, don't get too overexposed on a lot of this stuff right. because it can really just take you to the straight. But naturally, here we are today. We're going to try to help you out a little bit. And uh, we're going to be focusing on two areas today, one of which is the, uh, the whole issue with black America. Uh, we're going to do that piece in, in terms of how, do they, how they're involved in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in this whole campaign situation that we have today and, mm. and the pros and the cons. And we're going we're gonna to focus a bit uh, in, in that arena. And when you start thinking about the black community, its leadership in most cases tends to be the ministry, mm -hmm. the, the African-American church or the black church, if you will. And uh, so we're going to focus on that piece. The second half of the show, we're going to be maybe talking a little bit about, you hear this bit, bit, uh, bit about the voter ID. Uh, you mean, that's another political piece. And we need to talk a little bit about that. But we, our second half, I will be Jana Cox. We're going to be talking about Oregon in specific, mm -hmm. about voting, voting, how you access voting and whatever. So we'll kind of dovetail that in. But uh, joining me to talk about the first half of it is, uh, <coughs> is, is Matt uh, Cummings. Uh, He's a he's a he's a minister in his own right, and and uh, and and that you got Bob. You know, you've seen Bob here before, but um, I, I brought Matt along because the the issue we're going to be talking about, and, and as we get into this situation, we'll be talking about how blacks reacted to the whole issue of uh, gay marriage. Hmm. The president uh, made the point about the fact that uh, he supported uh, gay marriage mm -hmm. during that period of time, and as you know, um, the ministers uh, from around the country. Uh, some of what some of what just came out and said, well, they opposed it, the fact that he made that statement, but uh, but there were some points about that. And we're going to have that discussion, mm -hmm. and I will say that I've talked to uh, a number of uh, black ministers. However, you know, they're sort of like they don't mm -hmm. want to be visibly seen and shown and, and identify with them because in most cases, African Americans are kind of caught up in the situation. What do you do? I mean, you know, you got an African American president and. Mm -hmm. And a very tough situation. You can't challenge it. And then at the same time, you got a president that's trying to uh, win an election, and he's got to do what he has to do to get the numbers. And anyway, so it's, it's a you got, we, we talked about that last week a bit, mm -hmm. whatever. So anyway, I can go on and on and on. But let me set up the stage, if you will, about the whole issue of uh, uh, of uh, African Americans uh, or Black Americans here in this country. There was an article that uh, that Leonard Pitts Jr. wrote in the Oregon. He they, they carry his column. And I thought I'd read it, just kind of set the stage up, which I think you'd like. It says, racial pandering from left and right. The black and white of political code speak. Uh, Lord help us, they're talking race again. They're meaning Republicans and Democrats. Race is a critical, sensitive, and sometimes painful issue with relevance to everything from environmental policy to education reform to criminal justice to media to health care. For a politician to address it requires political courage. That's why politicians do not address it, usually, that changes during political season when a given poll calculates that breaking his customary silence might not might net some tactical advantage, which is how we come to find Newt Gingrich last week on MSNBC piously lamenting how racist is the network's Chris Matthews. <laughs> the former House Speaker displayed this previously unknown concern about racial misbehavior while defending himself against charges of saying. It seems Matthews had to the, the temerity to suggest that Gingrich, in calling Barack Obama a food stamp president during the GOP primary, had engaged in dog whistle politics designed to rouse the racial resentment of white working class voters. Gingrich was shocked, shocked at the notion. Why do you assume food stamp refers to black, he asked. What kind of racist thinking do you have? It is apparent, it's apparently news to Gingrich that politicians sometimes speak in code that when, for instance, Ronald Reagan referenced his made-up welfare queens, he was really promising white voters he'd make those lazy blacks get up off their behinds and work. 
There was a study in the 90s in which people had to envision a drug user, then describe the person they had envisioned. 95% envision someone black. Mm. This even though only about 15% of drug users actually are black. Mm -hmm. The point being that in the public mind, certain terms, urban, poverty, crime, carry racial weight, often at odds with reality. There are ways of saying black without saying black. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay? The idea that Gingrich, a 69-year-old career politician, does not know this or realize that food stamp president is such a term strains credibility. If he's really that much of a naivety, let us hope no one has told him the truth about the tooth theory. <laughs> it would break the poor man's heart. Where race is concerned, Gingrich is a dis disingenuous hypocrite, and Joe Biden is just a fool. Did the vice president really tell a largely black audience a few weeks back that if Mitt Romney is elected, the GOP will, will put y'all all back in chains? Y'all, really, a slavery joke. Really? Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. Why didn't Biden just show up with his pants sagging while gnawing a chicken bone? <laughs> it couldn't have been any less subtle. There are, what, 14, 15 black Republicans in this country. <laughs> So Gingrich is offending voters his, his party does not have. But Biden is pandering clumsily to voters his party does have and ru routinely ignore until just before election day. Mm -hmm. Black voters do not need to hear Biden say y'all any more than, than they needed in 2006 to hear Hillary Clinton accuse the GOP of running a plantation. What they, we, need is for the left and right to stop using us like hardware. Right. What we need is for would-be leaders to approach us with agendas tailored to our concerns. Talk about how you're going to bring investment to the inner city. Talk about ending the mass incarceration of young black men under the failed war on drugs. Talk about job training. Talk about restoring the voting rights of ex-felons. Talk about fixing schools. Do those things and you, and you won't have to say y'all. But of course, that's too much to ask. So instead, we get Gingrich's dewy-eyed, innocent act and Biden's linguistic black, blackface, the same old buck and wing of cynicism, op, opportunism, and nonsense. It turns out there's actually one thing more aggravating than politicians who don't talk about race. That's politicians who do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I thought that was very appropriate to, to the discussion we're getting ready to have. Oh, yeah. You, you got my point? So... Uh, you know, and then and just today, in fact, uh, Ann Coulter, mm -hmm. uh, who's a, sort of an activist in her own right, she's a, she's a publisher. Mm -hmm. uh, she's she's a actress. She's substituted at time and uh, and talk show host, you know, O'Reilly, and all kinds of folks and whatever. She's the same one, you know, people were throwing pies at on stage and things of that nature. Right. But she's a very assertive person in the in the quote in the New York era. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and when you're in New York, that's a whole different group of folks. You know, everybody's got a book. Mm -hmm. And everybody's writing the book. But she introduced her book today in regards to how blacks are being pushed under the bus, so to speak, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, and just in, in sort of a vernacular aspect of it. Sure. And she was sort of defending that and was very upset about the fact. And why is it that the Republican parties are throwing blacks under the bus? Why are, why are Democrats mm -hmm. throwing blacks under, under the bus and whatever? So it's kind of a heavy piece. So why don't we just get right <coughs> into the discussion? And at the same time, I want to really bring in this piece about um, the gay marriage thing. Sure. Because, as you know, when that was put on the table you know, in California, right, in California, mm -hmm. uh, blacks had gotten together, black Americans black and white Americans got together and said, hey, and they voted this thing down, mm -hmm. right? They voted this thing down. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, actually, they went to the Supreme Court and whatever, and then they reversed that whole peace aspect mm -hmm. of it. And now we got the campaign, and President Obama now has supported the fact that uh, gay marriage uh, it was okay and this, that, and the other. Sure. And so the ministers came out. They had a press conference, national press conference, yes. right? Oh, national nice. press conference, and made the point about the fact that uh, they opposed uh, that, that position. They didn't necessarily say they would not vote for President Obama, but the fact they opposed the position that he had taken mm -hmm. about that issue. And many ministers around this country felt that way. Sure. And kind of, again, they're kind of caught between sort of a, a rock and a hard place because somebody's running for office in one case, and it's all about numbers, I and mean, people talk about the numbers piece. But at the same time, for the black community aspect of it, it's really a tough time at this point in time. Sure. Where are they? Want to start off, Matt? Well, Give me some thoughts. Yeah, in relationship to uh, 
an example in regard to uh, to uh, uh, racial uh, comments and in regard to our own community. Uh, one thing that I noticed that was very apparent uh, was when I watched both the Democratic National Convention, I did watch the Democratic National Convention mm -hmm. and the Republican National Convention, and one thing that was very apparent was that in both conventions, black ministers, black leaders, those that are on the front lines were not speaking up in either right. convention. It was very disturbing to me. Uh, I have my differences at times with Jesse Jackson and with Reverend Al Sharpton, right. but I was expecting them to be on the podium mm -hmm. and speaking up, and so that was very disappointing. And they were there. And they were there. I, they were there. I, I was talk, Jesse was sitting uh, in the audience. Wasn't yeah. <clears throat> And I, I, you know, I talked to a number of the delegates. Uh, Oregon had the largest uh, black delegation I think it's ever had. They had about 18 to 20 uh, African Americans that attended mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the Democratic Convention. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Jesse Jackson said something, uh, and I might have said this uh, before on the show, that just because we have a black president does not mean that blacks have been delivered. Come on. You know. And when did he say this? He said this as he was accepting an award from the uh, uh, the black uh, politicians. I can't even think of the name of the group now, uh, but that coalition. Mm -hmm. They were giving him uh, uh, an Talk award. Jesse. Jesse. Yeah, Reverend Jackson. And, it, and when did it show on TV? Two o'clock in the morning. Mm. So most of us don't know anything about it. I just happened to be up at that time because I couldn't sleep that night, mm -hmm. and I was sound searching, I ran into it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what happens to us. When good things happen, as far as blacks are concerned, it's very little press. Mm -hmm. It's the bad things that one does that seems to cover all of us. Mm -hmm. And in politics, what has happened is, and I said this on the show when we were doing Bruce, is that the Republicans realize they're not going to get the vote, so why bother with them? The Democrats seem to think that we have the vote, so why bother with them? Mm -hmm. So we're that, that entity that is just there, mm -hmm. and we don't know how to integrate ourselves into the political system. And that's a perfect example of take Oregon. When I came here in 72, we had more black people in politics, in the House, in the Senate, uh, in state and city government, mm -hmm. and now you go look at it, and this looked like a whitewash. But these were Democrats. These were these were black. I know, but my point is that in most cases, most of them, ninety percent of right. them, were, were Democrats. Oh, okay, or right. oh, independents. Right, sure. right, right, right. Now you made mention about uh, Reverend Jackson getting an award of mm -hmm. some sort, right? But at the same time, you you, you think I, I think about the convention. That's what people sure. actually hone in on. Right, right? That's right. During the day, they hone in. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, That's and, right. And I and I and when I think about the fact, what the point he made about the fact that. The, rec the less the, the, the non recognition, right. especially yeah. uh, Reverend Jackson mm -hmm. and Reverend Sharpton. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was Reverend Jackson, the male, who actually opened the door. To sure, the as far that's as right. Running for president, sure. and also uh, Reverend Reverend Sharpton ran mm -hmm. for president. Mm -hmm. And and I you would think that he would at least have given an invocation of some sort. But at the same time, I'm thinking about that same deal. I realize there might have been some issues with reference to when he, when I guess was it uh, former President Bush ran for office and. Remember the, the old saying that you know, stay out of the bushes. Remember that they, mm -hmm. made, they made that point aspect of it, and then the, the whole issue. Then all of a sudden, as a result of that, they said that he basically had had birthed had birthed a um, a young lady. Remember, right? He had a child. Mm -hmm. But sure. the fact of the matter is that was kind of like used against him to a certain degree. Right. But well, we same, all make mistakes. No. I know, but that's okay. But mm -hmm. my point and is that when then I think about uh, my former President Clinton. Mm -hmm. He was on the diocese. Right. He made the speech and whatever. And he was almost impeached. And then, yeah, with Monica. <laughs> in fact, that issue is coming back to the table, right? Right. Now. Of course it saying? is. You see what I'm saying? Of course it so is. So if, if, in mm -hmm. fact, uh, uh, President Obama was willing to work with him, and mm -hmm. sometimes they had some differences, and he kind of like made up, and he there he was. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. why couldn't he have done the same thing with Reverend Jackson, and, and especially uh, Reverend Sharpton, because he's on radio every day. And right? TV as well. And, ready to, and, and TV, and yeah. he is supporting. Uh, President Obama, and I mean, I was, I was really, I was really, I, I, I thought about it. Gee whiz, where is Reverend Sharpton? Mm -hmm. And and then on the other side, there, I'm a traveling minister, uh, and 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 a lot of times I'm in Texas and a lot of parts of the country mm -hmm. preaching. So I know some of the conservative black ministers 
that are Republican, like C.O. Bryant mm -hmm. and uh, 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 Reverend um, uh, Stephen Broden, who both uh, have run for office and were in Tampa at the same time mm -hmm. and have had a voice and have basically supported the GOP, but neither one of them got any kind mm -hmm. of uh, time, uh, you know, um, I mean, with... On our side. That's right. right. And Colin Powell. That's right. Yeah. I mean, the general of the, of the military, or out the bat, even though Colin said that last time around he, he voted for, uh, for, for, for President, President Obama, Obama. Mm -hmm. but this time around he said, well, look, I'm, I'm waiting. He was waiting for, for someone yeah. to come sure. from, mm -hmm. from the party. To say, okay, fine, I want you to be a part of the deal. Right, Unfortunately, sure. the Romney folks. Well, they had Condoleezza Rice uh, on the dais, but I think it was because she was newsworthy at the time. You remember she and, the other, and another young lady had been accepted into Augusta, mm -hmm. uh, the golf uh, mm -hmm. club out in, right, in recent, Augusta, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the week before. Mm -hmm. So she's there, she's on, let's, let's bring her on. And I think former sure. President Bush gave it the okay. Yeah, if you understand what I mean. Well, his right brother there. had to come in and well, say, "Don't blame, don't blame my brother." But that's why you he know. Made, I think that's why. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's why he went. <laughs> All there. of us know See, what, you know, <laughs> what was really what being said there. Yeah. Yeah. But, but but let's let's talk a little bit about this this gay the, the gay marriage thing aspect of it. Uh, what, what what do you think? What, what, why are we? Why, why? Well, well, if I may, um, uh -huh. uh, it was known behind the scenes for a long time. That uh, that Obama has been actually a supporter for same-sex marriage. In fact, uh, when he was running for the state in right. in Illinois, Illinois. Uh, uh, he has a a form that he filled in that he's a supporter of same-sex marriage. Mm -hmm. Now it was kept out of the general election uh, in 2008, and actually, for the most part, uh, uh, I'm pretty certain black ministers across the country did not know this aspect of it. So um, uh, having said that, um, uh, it was not a surprise to me that this information came out. Yet at the same time, um, uh, what is disappointing is that I don't know, maybe you might have heard, mm -hmm. but I don't know if there was at any time he you know, our president actually sat down with black ministers in yeah, regard to this yeah. issue. Do you know uh, of anything? Not, I, not that I know of. I would have thought uh, maybe they would have ha that would have happened maybe when that announcement was made, you know, by those those ministers, that, it, that either maybe some Democratic ministers, if you will, would have sat down with them and had a press conference saying, okay, fine, you yeah. know, we are well, supporting this goes two ways. What's up? Uh, number one, a lot of politicians don't think that black ministers control the vote in their church. Well, there you go. Okay, so why waste my time? Mm. Let it be a fleeing moment, i.e., the hell a press conference. Now what? Mm -hmm. You know, that's one. That's one way of thinking about it. Sure. And politicians, believe me, they are they they sit down in that room and they all they 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 move those beads around. Mm -hmm. And when they see there's more beads over on this side than on this side, they run to this side to try and take care of something. Sure. And so it looked like evidently it was more beads against those those uh, black ministers then for them. Mm. And they said, let's not even comment on that. Mm. I don't remember anyone commenting on what they said, mm -hmm. other than someone Republican. Well, what, what, wouldn't you think that the <laughs> governor Romney, who's running for president, who's pretty well made the statement that blacks are not gonna vote for him, that he would have just jumped at the opportunity to get together with those black ministers that got national coverage and said, okay, fine, I'm gonna hold a press conference with you guys and, sure. and say, okay, why, fine. Why? Well, because in all due respect, uh, the press and the media has pretty well said that no blacks are going to be voting for him. But this wasn't about blacks. This was about gays. And I understand there's a large number of them in every city. So now I'm going to alienate that portion of the vote also? I don't mm -hmm. think so. I'm going to shut up and I'm going to stand to the side. Mm -hmm. I ain't saying nothing. This is one of those issues that I'm not getting involved in. All right. But now, you know, Bob, just recently, you know, he was pretty well caught on tape from the oh. standpoint, as they identified from the standpoint that 47% percent or so of <laughs> these folks are, gonna, are not going to vote for him. So right. that, that's automatic. Sure. And that was inclusive. That's why I brought up the issue about the fact that I think it would have been a, a strategic move on his part to have had those black ministers on behind him, basically saying, okay, fine, uh, I am in support of you from the standpoint that I'm anti the, uh, the gay marriage thing. Yeah. Well, well 
Well, I'm just doing that. Well, here's here's here's, here's, the, here's the other side of that. Talk about it. When he said 47 percent of, of the people are not going to vote for me, he wasn't just talking about blacks. He was talking about people that he feel are on welfare yeah. or getting some type of, of government assistance. Sure. And so that's not all white. I mean, that's not all black. That's why I read the article. You know, political code. Yeah. See, and so and so the <laughs> yeah. so. Everybody in the room, all of a sudden, you got 20 people in the room and you got 20, you got 10 ideas, mm -hmm. you know, because some are thinking black, some are thinking uh, everybody, some are thinking white. So you got to split. And, and so that's the politics in, in all of this mm -hmm. is that he made the statement, but he would thought he was making the statement to just a few people. And those people are not going to run around and tell anyone because they really and truly are just donors. They donating money. They're not out participating in the political arena. Mm -hmm. You know, so he thought he was safe and he got caught. And it came out to everyone and bingo. Now, all of a sudden, he's alienated a group of people, mm -hmm. both black and white mm -hmm. and Republican. Sure, of course. And Mexicans, and Hispanics. Yeah, and, I mean, and so, are, so, are so, all of a sudden, now he's got to start Middle running to get those bees back in his, in, in his side of the bowl mm -hmm. because he just just turned the bowl upside down. Yeah. But let's get again. I want to get back to black folks. I mean, okay, where, where are we in the in the race today? Right are now, solid. No, no. My opinion, and this is just an opinion. My opinion is that neither party uh, 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 at is 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 looking for us to be involved in the political process at all. Not the process, just give me your vote. That's it. That's all. Give me your vote and shut up. Now, we'll do something for you. It's an old slave mentality. Okay. We'll do something for now, you. The master now, said just just vote. Now Governor Romney actually uh, even though he recognized the fact that uh, many Mexican Americans are going to be voting for for the president mm -hmm. uh, did go out and outreach to Mexican Americans and actually pay, put together a political staff and paid for them sure. to go out and and talk. But on the other hand, on the other on the other side of the aisle, uh, what about President Obama? I mean, uh, uh, do you see any any spokesperson for him on that end? I think he has the mayor of Chicago. <laughs> mayor, no, I said black. A black. Uh, no, you said Mexicans. I was going to say I think he has the mayor of Chicago who's Spanish, uh, but as far as blacks. He has quite a few blacks on his staff that, uh, and a, a number going from state to state that are working the campaign. Now, these are outside consultants. I mean, this one, yeah. he, he basically put campaign funds mm -hmm. with, a, with a Mexican, Mexican-American group, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he, has, he didn't put any, any, any black consultant. He didn't, you know, he didn't, I was thinking about right. uh, uh, J.C. Watts or somebody like that, sure. you know what I mean? Uh, oh, you mean uh, Romney. Romney. Romney, yeah, yeah Romney. Okay. But even on the other side of the deal, I'm asking the same thing. Mm -hmm. There are well, consultants that are black. I mean, what, what about their involvement? Well, if, if, you, if, you, if you feel you have the black vote, why am I going to waste money trying to get the black vote? But do they have the black vote? <laughs> yes. Why do they have the black vote? Because blacks feel that that's the best, uh, he's the best, uh, he's the best opportunity for them to be successful if they attempt to be successful or to keep keep everybody to get something out of the system that we have okay but but at the same time as we as I read this article about the areas that they should be focusing on mm -hmm. you got me about the education right. piece and yeah. the voting rights all you know anything again uh, I understand what you just said and I do agree to a point that might be three-fourths of the mindset. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of other oh, uh, yeah. blacks right now that are just not seeing either party really having their interest. And so a real, uh, a, a real necessity for uh, blacks, no matter what perspective, needs to begin to, to have real serious conversation about where to go in the future. But because, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no, I'm interrupting you, know, you. Go um, right um, Because at this time, um, uh, the way uh, the interest is going with uh, people for for the Hispanic vote, for um, for the homosexual vote, for other stuff, I'm going to say kind of a radical thing. We're not in the future, right? 
according to how things are being played politically. Blacks. We're not mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. black people are not there. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, we you know, um, we are a uh, has been scenario mm -hmm. now. Um, uh, how both parties are acting right now. And so something different has to be done. And and so I believe, uh, the personal opinion, is that black ministers mm -hmm. and uh, uh, black activists and others have to begin to, to stop looking to our political uh, 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 officials uh, in regard to... Um, uh, believing that they're going to help us get something <laughs> and begin to do all we can uh, to work out our own problems in our communities themselves. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something that uh, Farrakhan said years ago? Sure. <laughs> you know what you, what you said, and we're still at that point where we're saying we need to. And so I agree with you 100%, mm -hmm. you know, but how do we get black ministers you know it's for, oh i know what it is for some reason everyone thinks that we as blacks are all on the same page because of the color of our skin and we're not i understand you know and so uh there are black ministers that are that will vote for president obama simply because he's black mm -hmm. there are others that will vote for him because they believe in some of the things that he, more yeah. of the things he's doing than what they see newt romney would give them sure. um, uh there are others that are Republicans, and they believe in one thing, and that is Republicans don't believe in abortion, and they're against gays, and therefore, I'm, that's why I'm there, because the Bible says so. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so people need to understand what we have here. We can't just get a room full of blacks and think we're going to come up with a, with a magic portion and fix this. But you know, on that particular point, let's talk about something maybe yeah. specific, like mm -hmm. Chicago, for instance. Sure. Like you say, you've got the mayor who at one point in time used to be with uh, with President, right. President Chief Obama, of staff. Chief of Staff aspect of it. But in Chicago, when you start thinking about Chicago, you think about Minister Farrakhan is there. Sure. Mm -hmm. Jesse uh, Jackson, Reverend Jesse yeah. Jackson is there. Right. Sure. You got my point. And, and, and a lot uh, of other and, strong and ministers. And at one point in time, the uh, 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 former well, president, President Obama, was there right. in Chicago aspect of it. And you hear these issues about all of the shootings and the killings yep. in the black community aspect of it. And you know, you got an issue. You got these leaders. Why can't they get together to solve this problem? And, and the first person that I see, and all due respect, as, as a solution to the problem, and all due respect, is Minister Farrakhan. You mm -hmm. know, here's a guy that, in all due respect, they can take a young man. And you know, saggy pants, the whole nine yard, mm -hmm. and put him in a suit and a bow tie, <laughs> and give him, a, and give him an, uh, a feel that he has an opportunity. an opportunity. Now, I'm from Chicago, right? Okay. And the one thing that happens there is that a lot of black kids grow up in the projects with the idea that there's nowhere else to go. Right. Sure. Right. And so, what they see is what they get. I can tell you from playing basketball that a lot of great guys came out of Chicago playing basketball, ended up going back. I went to college away from home, went back home. I found those same guys sitting on the curb because they were on drugs because they got caught up in the system there. Sure. They didn't know how to get away. I might have been one of those had I not got away from there. And how do we get... It's so many people there. To go back to what we said before. Yeah, about so the village. It takes, it, a, village it takes to, a village to raise, raise a child. child. The village is broken. And so, so how, when, do, how do we how do we fi how do we when fix you become that? afraid of your children, they will leave and they have no knowledge of where to go. So you're going to end up going off the cliff. So, and that's what's happening right now. So the leadership have left the community. Well, everybody that said turn your back, we can do it on our own. Okay. That's the new. That's the new thing. What Clarence, Car Clarence uh, Thomas said. I pulled myself up by my own bootstraps. So all the kids are now saying, "I don't need to hear what Jesse has to say. I don't need Farrakhan. I don't need uh, anyone else. I can do it on my own." And then they get out there and they get caught in the in the tidal wave out there, mm -hmm. because the power is never given; it's extracted. And you get what you can take, and you keep what you can hold. You know, they do right. not have any place to go support, and no support. Though, they need support. How, they, they you can turn your back on your but support. Yeah, but, they did, but they didn't come here on their own. <laughs> there had to be some sort of a marriage, right? It's easier to walk away than it is to help. Okay. 
<laughs> well, you know, evidently this, this is this is a subject matter that, as far as I'm concerned, needs to be brought onto the table. Right. Because we're going to have to do some fixing up, if you will, in the village, because the village is broken right now. Mm -hmm. you know, I think about folks who are well off. I think about ball players. You know, I think about um, you know the sports arena. I mean, uh, you see people getting educated. Whatever the education system is big. I mean, we, it's a good example of the fact. If anything that President Obama says that you should say to the black community that it's about education and the education system is broken in right. the black community. Agree. I agree. Okay. Agree. I agree. So it looks like we're, we're at that point now. We're just going to have to give this, this time up uh, a bit, but uh, we need to discuss this issue. At least this is a first of, of whatever. I mean, uh, and, to, and to the viewing audience, uh, I think you should have those kind of discussions too. Uh, here we are in Oregon, and we've got some of the similar. I mean, it's all over the country for that matter. Right. And we've got issues here, but I would I would agree with Matt that we've got the ministry. We do have a church, and we do have a ministry. Okay, and uh, it's going to take some support. At least that's a start, putting it back and building up those bricks again. Fair. Yeah. yeah, and and uh, I'm originally from Michigan, mm -hmm. so I do understand. Thirty-seven miles if you come, come across the lake. <laughs> <laughs> so so you know I do understand a lot about what you're saying in regard to where you're from in Chicago and the troubles that are there. Mm -hmm. And I also do understand that that there is not a magic potion right. just putting all uh, kind of black people in. Mm -hmm. At the same time, though, you have got to start somewhere. That's right. And there's got to be a new challenge yes. in regard to, uh, 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 for, for my part, as far as black ministers taking the lead mm -hmm. to take back the community. Mm -hmm. That's all that. I'll On say. that particular note, we're going to yeah. give it up. But no, we're going to have this more. more oh, I, okay. This is a very important piece, okay? Mm -hmm. and then we might be able to get some of the, maybe get the Democratic chair and, and the Republican chair to come and sit at the table and, and address them on these issues. Yeah, okay, Bob? because it's bigger than both of them. Yes, it is. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a short break and we'll be back with our second guest. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Folks, I guess here we're in, the, we're in our second half of the show aspect of it, and we're going to get right with our guests at this point in time. And I might add that uh, you choose, you choose. Edu this is a you choose education forum. Uh, this is a nonpartisan group. The you choose aspect of it, Debbie and a lot of other folks have put this thing together, and they're trying to get to the voters across the board about issues, if you will, that are that we're faced with here uh, in the state. In fact, even from a national perspective. But uh, uh, they're a very exciting group, and uh, I would uh, I would suggest. Uh, 
and uh, that you at least try to stay in touch with them because they have a number of forums and discussions about very interesting subjects and uh, that's one of the reasons why we've got it. We've sort of uh, joined them, if you will, here at the Oregon Voters Digest and we support them. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Anna. And then, in fact, along that particular line, they're going to have another forum uh, from the education forum that you choose. And Chan is sort of like chairing that piece, right? No, like, Janice Dysinger Jan Janice is. Janice i got to make sure I give her credit for that. <laughs> Sorry about that, Janice. Okay. But Chan is going to be either the spokesperson to talk a bit about uh, this one particular issue that they're going to be discussing here very shortly. It's improving Oregon vote by mail. Very interesting. Improving Oregon vote by mail. Okay. And uh, I noticed that there was a, in this introduction, this is, this is Janice's piece, but uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower made a quote that says, the future of this republic, republic is in the hands of the American voter. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. Janet, welcome. Thank Thank you. you. Okay, fine. Okay, well, let's, let's talk about this piece. What are you trying to do? Um, and this is just a portion of this, right? Y yes. Uh, the Thursday meeting, uh, the Wednesday meeting at the West End building is going to be about a number of proposals okay. that you choose has put forth that would uh, make vote by mail more uh, readily available to all voters, that would clean up some of the issues because both sides uh, in recent years since the Bush Gore election have been very, very concerned about voter fraud issues. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it used to be a joke that the uh, mayor of Chicago would boast about delivering dead votes, and Lyndon Bay Johnson would talk about equal opportunity for all the dead in the cemetery. Mm -hmm. um, it was a joke provided that there weren't lawsuits, that elections were not decided by 250 votes. Once endless recounts and endless lawsuits and close elections came in, then people became more concerned about the legitimacy of the vote. But I have to tell you is that this is an, an important issue, but doesn't begin to approach in importance the issues you guys talked about in the first half of the show. More to come. Well. <laughs> And, and as you know, Bruce, I generally come here to talk about K through 12 yeah, education. Right, right. And I'm going to take issue with one thing you said. Talk to me. K through 12 education in this country and in this city is very bad in the inner cities, but it is also very bad every place else. Mm -hmm. Our education system has. Right? Our whole educational system is terrible, mm -hmm. and unless and until we can fix it, this economy cannot be competitive. I agree with you. And our citizens cannot be, you said, we get together and we're going to be self-reliant. Without the benefits of education, there is no self-reliance. Mm -hmm. There is no possibility of an educated voter. You've just got a dependent voter. Mm. And I don't think, and you know this from other, other times I've been on the show, I don't think that this is a minority problem. Well, of course, it's worse in the inner cities. But only 38% of all Oregonians who graduate are ready to do college work at the minimal level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that's... We're going to get into that because, you know, we got... No, Governor I, oh, Kitzhaber. I'm sorry. Governor Kitzhaber has got a new, new program. Yeah, going, I know. And we need got... to discuss that, right? Yes, but on another show. <laughs> okay. Anyway, okay. what I'm here to talk about <laughs> today are a series of proposals. Okay. And the first, uh, one or two of those proposals are controversial from a minority point of view, uh, but most of these proposals are not. Okay. Uh, the first proposal that we put up that I think is good for everybody is that we have a vote by mail system in this state, right. and I think that every ballot should be sent out with a postage paid return envelope with it. Oh. And then People don't have to drive or take a bus to a drop box or get a, post, uh, a postage stamp. Used to be we all had postage stamps, mm. but we don't anymore. Mm. You just have to leave it in the nearest post office box or on your front stoop. Oh. Mm. That's, that's one of the proposals. That is an essential proposal. Mm. Okay. Um, and what uh, Kate Brown has said is that that would be paying people to vote, and it isn't because the only people that get paid. Kate Brown, Secretary of State. Yes, 
the only people who get paid are the U.S. Postal Service. <laughs> <laughs> people aren't going to take the stamp. They can't use it for anything else. Right, right. So that's one proposal. Uh, the, uh, another proposal, there were about six of them, uh, was to basically eliminate most of those drop boxes because we're having a lot of trouble following how they're picked up. Uh, keep uh, uh, a polling place and drop boxes of, uh, open at polling places on election day. But if everybody has a stamp, I mean a postage paid addressed envelope, everybody can put it in the mail. Mm. Right now, people are putting off voting and putting off voting, and 50% of people vote on election day, mm. which is unnecessary. Mm -hmm. um, another proposal that we have is that no ballots should be counted before election day. Results of ballot, early ballot counts are being leaked. Being leaked? Yes. Okay, mm. and that does have an impact. Why, why is that so? Why is it, why is it a problem? Well, there are two ways in which they're being leaked. The first is, is that as somebody votes, you don't know how they vote, but on the envelope you have a name, and that name has a party affiliation in the lists. Mm -hmm. So you can let, uh, give advanced information and say, look, so many more Democrats from this district or so many more Republicans have voted. But in addition to that, there's a lot of money here for, at, at issue if the newspapers and the candidates can get primary information. Mm -hmm. We are now counting the ballots eight, seven, up to seven or eight days before the election day. It's not necessary. Counting ballots involves scanning them. It's, by law, the elections should, the, the ballot should not be counted until election day. Mm -hmm. And even then you've got, you know, 10 hours before the close of polls. Mm -hmm. So you've got enough time to count all the ballots that came in earlier. Mm -hmm. um, our fifth proposal is on electronic security, and that's Robert McCullough uh, is, is being one of the lead speakers. Uh, it just basically, I think Democrats are more concerned than, re than Republicans on this issue right now from what I read. But when we did the election in 2000 with the hanging chads, it was 2000, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, People yeah. went to this electronic system mm -hmm. and it, with the best of intentions. And now we figured out the government did this big program, a big study, that you can, somebody can dicker with the electronic systems and there's no paper trail. There's no way of figuring out who voted what. The only thing you have is something on the computer. The computer can be programmed to take every fifth mm -hmm. Democratic vote and turn it Republican or every fifth Republican vote and turn it Democrat. Mm -hmm. You would never know. Mm -hmm. And so this system that was, that was put into place in order to save the integrity has just introduced giant conspiracy theories. And I, I don't know that they're unjustified conspiracy theories. I do know that they are held equally by both parties. Mm -hmm. uh, and if both parties agree on anything, there might be something to it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and how is Kate responding? I'm sure you probably shared this with her. Uh, <clears throat> Janice, we, share, we publish these proposals. Right. And Kate uh, Brown responded uh, to basically each of them. I can give you her responses. Uh, some of those responses were published in the Scanner, which is a North Portland paper. Yeah, a black newspaper. A right. black newspaper. Hmm. Of, well, why not the rest of the news? What about the Argonian and all the rest of them? Or was it just one? Well, thing? no, no. Uh, Northwest Connections published the whole uh, the set of proposals. Okay. and. Uh, Cascade put it on Voices of Oregon, oh, hmm. an Oregon Catalyst. I don't have a tracking service for but all I know. Was, other people. But uh, the major newspapers and, and, the, and the other news media. Not you know. that I know of, but I don't know because mm -hmm. we don't track it. Okay, okay. Uh, and, but the last proposal we have is the one that has attracted the most attention, and that is that uh, we require minimum federal ID. Mm -hmm 
requirements to vote. Uh, that does not, that's HAVA compliance. There's an, an act that was passed again in response to the Bush Gore election, I think 2002, saying that there has to be some identification hmm. on these votes. The identification consisted of something under HAVA, like a bill sent to your house. Hmm. Um, it is not and has never been photo ID. And under the HAVA law, if you cannot afford or don't have that identification, the state will work with you to get some sort of identification. Mm -hmm. Oregon does not require that in its elections. And this, you know, the way uh, the automatic response is, well, that means that what Oregon, I mean, that any Voter ID is code for racism. I think we're getting back to that discussion. discussion we just had. But what I would like to say with respect to this particular voter ID is that as it now stands with Oregon law, the injustice is to the minorities hmm. in two ways. And these are entirely clear once you understand them. If you are not HAVA compliant, your vote doesn't count for any federal office, not for president, not for senator, not for congressman. They have to go through the ballots and obscure your votes. Hmm. Hmm. So you may think that you are voting in the federal election, but you aren't. Hmm. It's very expensive to do that, of course, for the state, and it's unnecessary and it gives people the false notion that they actually are voting for President of the United States. There are 9,000 non-HAVA compliant uh, voters in Oregon. Hmm. Uh, given time, they'll, you know, we, the state can work through that. But what the state hasn't done is they're still allowing non-HAVA compliant registrations. And it's, it's, fa it's, it's false packaging. Mm -hmm. uh, and the l other way in which it's just desperately unfair, not to blacks, but to people who are non-citizens. And I, this, I'm not talking here about undocumented aliens. I'm talking about any non-citizen. The way it works now in Oregon is you go to the DMV or for social services hmm. and they are required by law to ask you to register to vote hmm. and they are also required by law not to ask you if you are a citizen. Hmm. Now as Kate Brown has put on her blog this isn't a problem because you're not going to vote because if you do vote and then apply for citizenship the immigration service is going to check whether you have voted. Mm -hmm. And if you have voted and you weren't a citizen, that's a felony and you'll be denied citizenship. And that's on her... That's on her. She, she said as much on her web page. I don't know that the immigration service will actually do that, but if they don't like, like you, they certainly have that option. Who monitors that? Is that, is that the Secretary of State's office? They monitor that? The Secretary of State's office monitors the whole election process. Okay. So they are actually encouraging non-citizens to vote uh, by handing them the cards and saying register. It's like I go to Target. You'll get 10% off if you apply for a Target credit card. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why not? <laughs> you give me a paper to say you can vote. Okay, I'll vote. Hmm. But in voting, if I'm not a citizen, I do, nobody has told me that it's a felony. Hmm. Hmm. Or maybe it's a misdemeanor. I don't know what it is. But according to Kate Brown, it's enough to keep you from getting citizenship ever. Hmm. So I, I think that this, to have this minimum kind of uh, identification would actually benefit at least... Um, immigrants to this country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And did, did Kate respond? And you said you, she did respond to some of these points. Yeah. Anything specific that you can... You uh, yes, can I to? can. She responded to the stamp self-addressed envelope, her how, office. How did she respond to that? I thought that she said it would be 
uh, her office, the spokesman for her community, uh, for the office, said it would be too expensive. Wow. It's the cost of a first class letter. And the voter has to bear that expense anyway. And, you know, we're talking, what, 48, 56, 57 cents to the state. It's too expensive mm -hmm. when there's mailing out all of this other stuff. Mm -hmm. A Pew study in 2010 in Oregon showed that just the cost of maintaining the registration system spread across all voters in this state was $4.11 a year. Mm -hmm. Cost of a first-class stamp doesn't. Well, the whole argument was to, uh, in regards to vote by mail was to get more people involved. Sure. That was the whole idea. And I think the idea of the stamp on the deal would make a lot of sense because it, otherwise, a lot of times people just round foul it. Just basically throw it, you know, just throw it away. But if they had the stamp there, that would really encourage a lot it of It would encourage an enormous... Seniors, like, like yes, seniors, certainly seniors, certainly shut-ins. Yeah, yeah, folks shut uh, or whatever. Uh, it would encourage everybody. Wow. Uh, all you have to do is put it in the mail yeah. mailbox. Wow. Interesting. It would encourage absentee voters. It, 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 it's just we all get so much junk mail. To begin with, yeah. And we just start, you know, as you said. And the argument was it was costing too much. Did she give you a number in terms of what it would have cost? Yeah, that would be I nice checked with the post office and asked. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, it's a very complex formula. Uh, and I said, even though it's, the state is nonprofit, they said yes, but they gave me a ballpark number that it would cost the state fifty-six cents a ballot. Fifty-six cents a ballot, which amounts to about well, what? How many people you got in? I don't know. It depends on how many people vote. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But still, I mean, the whole idea of the state here was, and when they came out, I remember that, that basically getting them out that vote by, by mail was to get more people involved because they were having problems yes. getting people to, uh, to vote and to participate. And, and look, we have now deconstructed our bus system. It, I mean, you, you probably know better than I do what it takes oh, to get from horrible. one place in Portland to another place in Portland and talk about carbon footprints. I mean, we're driving, I'm driving on occasion, Ten miles to put a my ballot in a drop box. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Well, this makes a lot of sense here. Mm -hmm. And at least if this is a giveaway to voters, it's an equal opportunity yeah. giveaway. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they uh, there's another issue we're asking to enforce to enforce an existing law that. Um, that unused ballots be destroyed before the counting begins, but that's... How'd she respond to that? I don't... That is something that? that Janice asked me not to discuss because uh, Janice Deisinger is one of three citizens who is suing the Secretary of State over this issue, and the lawyers have said, you can't talk about well, it. Well, she's not you, huh? We're here. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> she's my friend. Oh, well, you know, but it, yeah. On eliminating the drop boxes, Tim okay. Scott said in the scanner article again, that um, the drop boxes are perfectly safe, that every team that picks them up consists of one Republican and one Democrat, and everything is logged, and uh, there's security, and they're repurposed uh, uh, mailboxes. Some of them are repurposed mailboxes. A lot of them are cardboard boxes. They're put into mail slo uh, book slots. Hmm. You, we just, hundreds of people can handle these ballots. Mm. But in fact, Janice Deisinger has never met any self-identified Republican who was ever selected for any of the pickup teams. Mm. Mm. And she is part of the observers. The observers asked to at least observe mm. the pickups and uh, be given the routes and the times, which they were given uh, and they tried to follow, but it became a game, mm -hmm. and the people who were doing the pickups uh, speeded through school zones, ran red lights, mm. and uh, took alternative routes, and our guys 
Wow. I mean, they're not Tom Cruise. Hmm. Well, you know, <laughs> but, but as, they as gave you up. Were, as you were sharing this with us, I, I mean, what comes to mind is that uh, the largest newspaper in the state is the Oregonian. Yeah. They've got an editorial board. They've got mm -hmm. staff. I'm not trying to take anything away from the scanner aspect of it, but in all due respect, uh, they are not a daily paper, okay? And I would have thought that uh, did you did you all go to Janice go to the to the editorial board of the Oregonian Janice and, and cite these and instances? Ruth Bendel have repeatedly done that. Then what, and what from happened? time to time we've gotten they've gotten op eds in it. But, yeah, I, but what about this whole discussion that you shared with us one, right now? Did they get this? Were you given the opportunity to go before the editorial board no. to discuss each of these points? No. We, Why not? I don't know. The Oregonian has a lot of things on its plate. But this, and is, this is huge. I mean, yes, but I don't think huge. it's I mean, as huge as K through 12 education. I yeah, mean, but, yeah, but we're still talking about the issue of voter ID right now. I mean, that's a big discussion at this point in time. Because no everybody has politicized it. And what they have said is that voter ID is always code for racism. Even the words voter ID. Well, more than important, and the, the Oregonian should take this. We got the staff. I mean, it's Oregon, so why not? I mean, we are we are a very pro state of getting folks to participate in the election process. Very, very important. And I would say I, I, it bothers me that the Oregonian, is particular, the Oregonian, would not at least give you the opportunity to get before that board and have this discussion, including the major TV stations. Sure, to be great. KXL is interviewing Robert McCullough on the electronic. Uh, security. You know, I'm thinking about Channel 2, Channel 8, Channel yeah. 12, oh, that's the main, and Channel 10, friend, that's another. Bruce, Get Bruce, these folks or something else. I live out Skyline Ridge yes. by Scapoose. Yes. I don't get the Oregonian. Okay. <laughs> For all I know, they could have run something on this. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, if you ask me the papers I read, it's the Scapu Spotlight and the St. Helens Chronicle. Okay. Well, tell me this. Why don't you, one, let's identify when you're going to have this, this forum again on, this on Wednesday. We're going to have it on Wednesday what evening. Day what day is that? Uh, the 26th, the I 26th believe. The 26th and where? Uh, at the West End Building on Cruise Way. Okay. Uh, I is, think is it's 1401. Number? I have that here. Give me a quick phone number. Quick phone Someplace. Number. You got about another minute by that mess. Let's uh, see if we can get that information out. Okay. Uh, the cruise way is four, one, four.